how y'all doing now i'm back here again and this is gonna be a little short one or at least i it's probably gonna be short um this time we're going to talk a little bit about uh importing code and exporting code uh, so the importing part is gonna be pretty short uh the exporting part i just wanted to bring up because this confused the shit out of me when i first started learning go uh so when it comes to importing packages uh, there's, it's, it's very straightforward. So let's say we want to use the FMT package to print out to the console. What we just do, import, and then the name of the package. So it's FMT, like that. Uh, and I'm going to do FMT.println, hello, just like that. Uh, like, oh, I guess it's complaining about that, I guess. Okay. So let me run this real fast just to show okay now let's say we wanted to use something else let's say we want to use the um the log uh package so we're going to do import log like that and i'm going to go down here and do log uh print line that's print yeah print line hello again and uh you'll notice that my auto formatter did a thing where it wrapped them in a uh, open close parentheses. That's because constantly writing import this, import that, import this, that gets very tedious. So Go has this convenient little syntax where you can wrap a bunch of these like very like the same type of statements in these open close parentheses to, to save having to say import over and over again. Uh, you can actually do this exact same thing if you're declaring a bunch of um of, of variables. So like uh, just the, this is a quick example, just because it's kind of related. Instead of doing like var my var you know string uh, var my var to and something like that, you can do um var my var string my var to and like that instead of doing the um. The other one, oops, what did I do? Yeah. That is syntactically the same thing. And that just saves you from having to write var 20,000 times while you're doing that. Uh, so that's the most basic way to import packages. Uh, but let's say that for some reason, we wanted to call this package something else when we were using it. Um, actually, I didn't run it, but I made it run. Okay, yeah. Uh, so let's say I, instead of me calling this log, maybe I wanted to call it my log. But when you import a package, you can actually alias it so that you can call it something else instead of the actual package name. So what if I just want to call it my log like that? So instead of saying log down here now, I would say my log. If I run this, you will see that it still runs. It's fine. And there's a there's a one other circumstance thing that you can do here uh, and the only time I've ever seen you this applicable is with uh, database drivers because you don't actually use database drivers you just want to import them and that and that syntax is this underscore here now you should recognize the underscore at this point probably which is it kind of means like well I, I'm not going to use it so I, I, so not, I don't really want to pay attention to it uh, so when you're doing uh, a function that may return multiple values if you just don't want one of the values and you don't want the uh, the compiler to complain about you not using a variable you can use this underscore uh, symbol to basically say I don't care about it throw it away this kind of means the same thing but it's meaning like hey I'm not going to directly reference this package but I want it imported anyway uh, the only time I've personally seen this used is when you're having to import drivers for say SQL databases. Uh, because again, you don't directly interact with the package itself usually, you just have to import it so that it's um, available to use with the standard SQL package uh, driver in Go. So like a name, so I, I could just call it, like let's say I'm gonna say um, OS. Basically, what I'm saying is, I'm not going to actually reference the operating system, the, the OS package, just import it anyway. And you also notice that um, my tooling that normally cleans up unused imports in my file, it did not remove that one because 
I, the, the underscore there tells it, hey, you know, don't remove this. There's a reason why I'm importing. Uh, so that's not like that's basically all I got to say about imports. That's pretty straightforward. And now let's get to the um, confusing mess that I would call, or at least initially the confusing mess I would call understanding how exports work in packages. So if you've used another language, you're familiar with having to usually specify, you know, whether a very a property or a function or something is public outside of that uh, library or outside of that file. And, uh, you, you know, if it's talking about a class, you would declare something as public so it's accessible outside of that class. Uh, if we're talking something about like JavaScript, you would put the export keyword in front of a function to make that function available outside of that file, things like that. Well, Go does have that logic, kinda, uh, but it's the way it's implemented is interesting. It's very intuitive once you actually understand how it works, but at the start, you're gonna be like, what? what, what is happening? So just for this purpose, I wrote a very, very simple small package that I, that's literally just called test package. And I've already um, initialized the Go module in this directory and I've already uh, imported it. So I'm gonna go to gitlab.com slash dac45 slash test package. That's what it's called. And we are, I'll show you what the actual package looks like here in a minute, but I want to demonstrate something to you. So there is a number of things in this package. There is a two constants, two variables, two structs and two functions defined in it. And they're all aptly named const1, const2, var1, var2, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to do fmt print line and I'm going to do uh, test package dot const1. I think that's what I called it. Yeah. So we're going to run and you're just going to say I'm exported because it was available outside the package. Uh, but there is another one there that I said it was called const2. Um, print line test, oops, test, uh, spell test package. Uh, const2, like that. But you notice I'm getting an error, interesting enough. So let me run go vet and see what the error is. Um, const2 not declared by test package. Hmm, interesting error. Uh, let's get rid of this. And let me, let's actually open up that test package file, shall we? So I'm gonna vertical split on, yes, that. So we have our, uh, we have, here's our package that I was, I was importing. Ah, I see my problem. Uh, the name is, uh, does not have a capital letter, right? So let me go change this and run this. Hmm, it's still saying I have an error. Interesting, let's run this. Cannot refer to unexported name test package dot const to. Now, before I tell you why, it is one of these is exported and what is not. If you have zero an idea how, the, like if, if you don't already know why this is, I want you to do me a favor before I continue, leave me a comment down below on your guess as to what is Go using to determine whether something is being exported or not exported, all right? Give you a second. Okay, so as interesting as this is, and again, uh, this is very intuitive once you understand this, the thing Go uses to determine whether this is exported or this is exported is whether the first letter of its name is capitalized. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know what the, uh, the logic was behind that decision. F for all I know, this is something that was done in like a much older language and I just have no idea. Like the oldest language that I even have any, any working knowledge of is C. And uh, I don't remember how that works and see either. But, uh, but anyway, yes, so you'll notice here I have marked every single one uh, that's exported and not exported, at least I, if I could, with like a string. It says like funk one here has a capital letter and returns the string I'm exported. Conversely, there's another function here called funk two that does not have a capital letter or the first name and it says I am not exported. So let's test that, shall we? If I go back over here, uh, let's get rid of that because we already know that's borked. I'm gonna do fmt print line test package. I forget if I can even reference bars outside the package like this. I think so, okay. 
I must be able to because it didn't yell at me. Okay, that's fine. But okay, but now let's do. Um, oops, where'd I go? I went the wrong way. Oh, yes. Go to this. Yes. And it's two. So we have var two. Notice I'm getting the same error again. If I run, it, again it says cannot refer to unexported name test package dot var two. So. That's 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 your answer, <laughs> as uh, as very as uh, maybe as um, obscure as that is, and I I forget exactly how I found this out. It's probably just mentioned somewhere on the uh, the actual Go site, but yes, I had to look this up because the first I don't know couple of weeks that I worked with Go, I got so confused as to why some things were accessible and some things were not, and when I found out, it was a little just whether this this freaking first character is capitalized or not is what affects that. I was like, all right. <laughs> I mean, okay, I, I can understand it, but yeah. Okay, so that's all I got for you today. <laughs> I just, uh, I wanted to make a video about this at some point because this this whole thing about understanding when something was and wasn't exported confused the shit out of me the first little while I worked here or uh, worked with this. Uh, be sure to... Uh, like the video, subscribe, follow, wherever the, whatever the thing is called here. Uh, with that, uh, yeah, y'all come on back now. I'll see you next time.